two things church folk don't want to talk about. The three letter word and money. And you want both of, you want more of both. I got all green on, so I want to let you know about this series called Run Me My Money. Listen, I want to let you know that I read a statistic that said the average wealth in America in the inner city is $17,000. Let that sit in. A funeral is more than $17,000. So we need to do some biblical formation as it relates to stewardship. I don't just want to teach you about 10%. We can't even handle percentages if we're not managing what we have properly. Whether you grew up poor, whether you grew up middle class, whether you grew up in a high-end community, we still have a responsibility to let the next generation stand on our shoulders. Whether you have kids or whether you don't, you have nieces, you have family, you have friends, you have projects that you wanna be philanthropic to. Well, you can't be philanthropic if you don't have the resources. Let's be real, money is a tool. And when you have money, you can do more and money gives you access to more opportunity. Listen, church, we have a responsibility to be good stewards of God's money but you got to learn how to use money. And there are biblical principles that have been being used throughout many years. I believe many of you say you don't believe in slavery, but you do. You do believe in slavery. How dare you say I believe in slavery? Well, if you believe in debt, you believe in slavery. Let that sit in. Tune in. It's going to be fine. I want to talk to you today about, I think it's prophetic, I think it's important, I think it's, it's, it's a game changer if you get this message. Um, my job as a community leader is number one to teach you things that matter. So remember this, whatever I'm preaching about, you're going to be tested in. So we talked about relationships, how many of you were tested in your relationships? Right? Because Satan will come to steal that word that you, that, that you heard. So. You, you have to learn that whatever you're hearing, you're going to be challenged by. And so, the, so I, I need to get out of that relationship series, praise the Lord. Um, so we, 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 because you have, you start seeing all friendships and different things. Satan's trying to challenge you by the word that you teach. Um, so I want to, I want to um, deal with this idea uh, of money. The sermon title is called Run Me My Money. Now, how did I get this title? I don't know if that's a bad saying. If it is, email nate at tkci.org. Because it, what happened was somebody had owed his wife some money. And they were supposed to do a job, and they didn't do their job. And, and she said, you, you know, the lady thought it was fine, and it was all dandy. She need to run me my money. Meaning you need to return to me the money that you owe me. And I thought, man, that was such a good point to title this sermon. I believe God is saying to many of us, run me my money. Before you log off and say, oh, let me go to another church because you're about to hit me for the time. I want you to hear the entire message because it's going to make us all grow and be better. I want to give you a, a, a I want to first begin by saying that in Malachi, every church knows this uh, because this is a verse that a lot of preachers utilize to talk about tithe. Even Pastor Watson talked about this. Y'all didn't catch the joke. Pastor Watson coming to America. Okay, never mind. Um, so, uh, so he talked about this. And so when we talk about giving, it says, um, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. But he says, I will do something that's so unique. He says, I will open up the windows of heaven. Now, I believe the church has missed this word windows because we think that the windows mean something unique. In my understanding of it, I don't believe God is cursing people who don't tithe because I know a lot of people who don't tithe and who are still prospering. But there's a difference between having good success and success. And so I want all of us to have good success. Now, I promise you, before this sermon is over, I'm going to offend you. But you can't, truth is offensive sometimes. It, it offends me. You know, we, we're going to offend each other because it's, it's going to make us better, though. 
because a lot of our faith isn't growing because we're hoping God does a miracle for us because we don't know how to manage money. We're praying, God, send me money, and God's saying, why would I send you more when you can't manage what I've already given you? The, why is that, Pastor, you don't need to be teaching on this, you need to be teaching on something else. Yes, I do. The average urban family has $17,000 as their net worth. Seven, a funeral isn't $17,000. So how are you going to get buried if all you have is $17,000? So you're going to make us do a GoFundMe for you? We already got to grieve you're dead. Then we got to grieve you ain't had no money to take care of yourself. We can't pawn your Louis Vuittons. We can't pawn your bread bottoms. We can't pawn your belt. So we need to be good stewards because most of us have had a million dollars flow through our hands if we've worked since 18 and we're 30. So let's help each other. I don't care if you're a baller, you could be more generous. I don't care if you're dead broke. By the time this series is over, you're going to be like, child, run me my money. I ain't got time for that. Because true success, I know we, some of us grew up poor and we think true success is being able to go to the car lot and they give us a car that we dreamed of and then we go online and say, the Lord blessed me with a new car, but here's the reality. If you owe payments on it, it ain't yours. You are leasing a blessing. So I want to help us. I'm not helping you. I'm helping us. I want to give you Luke chapter number five, which is a verse that you and I need to read. Luke five, verse number two. This is Jesus fishing with his disciples. And sorry, can I might be at the, uh, yeah, NIV. So Luke chapter five, verse two, it says, he saw at the water's edge, two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. Ooh, that's so good there, boy. Ooh. Number three, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little further into the shore. And then he sat down and started teaching the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the water, into the deep water, and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked all night, and we worked hard, and we caught nothing. But because you say so, I will let down my nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled for partners to come help them carry and fill boats so full that the boats began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he, for he said to his companions, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken and so were James, John, sons of Zebedee, and from that day they followed him. My God from heaven. This is an important part that we must realize that we must have structure for surplus. I, I want to prophetically say this. I don't believe it's everybody, but I believe it's some of you that God is going to let you walk through a season of surplus but you need to learn how to structure for surplus. Now, we, we are known in church to tell you what to do with 10%. 10% belongs to who? God. The first tenth belongs to God. But then it's like, yeah, but what about my 90%? If I don't know what to do with my 90%, what good is it? I want to give you a slide that's going to help you. I want you to download this app called Every Dollar, Every Day or Every Dollar, whatever it's called. Um, Every Dollar. 
I want you to download the app. It's free. It is, I get no kickbacks from it. It's from Dave Ramsey. It teaches you how to do a zero-based budget. So that means that every dollar you have is accounted for. Because you cannot grow if you don't know where to put your 90%. How much of my 90%, most of us, all we think about is, I can afford my car, I can afford my home rent, I'm good. That doesn't mean you're good because you can afford those things. Let me give you the breakdown of percentages on how Dave Ramsey, who's an internationally known financial guru, teaches us how to manage our 90%, our 100%. 10% is the first line item that he made, which says you give. Even businesses know 10% we need to give away because you get more when you give more. Amen. Number two, saving 10%, you pay yourself. Whether you put it in the bank, whether you send it off somewhere and invest it, wherever you need to send your money to work. The bank is not the best place to send your money to work. This is not that type of class, but I'm going to keep on moving. And there is an empowerment session that we're also doing online so you can watch online and it's for business owners we're inviting a hundred business owners in it's called what your MBA will not teach you about business because some of us know how to do hobbies we don't know how to do business and I'm bringing my friend in he's a millionaire to teach us about <coughs> excuse me I don't have corona just allergies. <laughs> How to do business well. So savings, 10%. Food, 10 to 15%. Don't send me to the grocery store because I'm going to come back with a bunch of stuff that we don't need. You need to go to the grocery store with a mission, a list, so that you know how to direct your money, 10 to 15%. Utilities, 5 to 15%. Housing, which is your rent, your mortgage. This is all before taxes, all before taxes. 25% needs to go to your housing, your rent, your mortgage. What can you afford? Some will bump to 30%. 25 is more conservative because if something breaks in your house, you got to be able to fix it. Good to see you, Clinton. So this is important too. Transportation, 10%. 10% of your income should go to transportation. That means how much can I afford of a car? 10% of what I have. Healthcare, five, health, five to 10%. Going to the gym. Here, here it is for all you. Uh, team no sleep. Never go to the gym. Never work out. You cannot work from a hospital bed. Amen. So you need to take care of your health. You need to walk, you need to exercise, you need to do all these things because some of us are leaving the earth early because we're not stewarding our, our bodies well. Insurance, 10 to 25%, five to 10%, that's Amazon. For some of you, recreation, that's, recreation is Amazon, click, and it comes to the door. Um, recreation, five to 10%, personal spending, whatever that is. For ladies, it's getting your nails done, if that's you. I'm not stereotyping you, because some ladies are like, I don't do my nails, I'm not that type of woman. It's doing your hair. If you don't do your hair, that's fine. I'm not stereotyping you, I'm just giving you examples. 10%, five to 10% personal spending, then five to 10% miscellaneous. If you use this budget, you'll start getting out of debt. Don't ask God for a miracle because you won't budget well. Now here we go into this text. That's how you deal with the 90%. I want to help you get the app every day or every dollar. It's, it's, it's free. Download it. Start planning your budget. So at the end of the year, you can have surplus and you won't wait on a stimulus check. Now, here's, here's the interesting thing that Jesus shows us. Jesus shows us that if you follow him, he'll give you enough food, enough provision, plenty, and it's very compelling because the size of the catch indicates provision beyond their immediate moment. He gave them enough food as fishermen to sell so that they can have resources beyond today. 
He gave them enough so that they can eat again tomorrow. And the food that is sold becomes daily sustenance to others. It is that doctrine of vocation that God blesses me in my business so that I can feed others in humanity. He gave them such a large catch that they had enough provision for Simon to signal and get partners to come in. But what I found that was so interesting was that Simon knew Jesus before, but he didn't follow him fully until this moment he says, no, nah, I'm going to follow you full time. Because right. I've seen you do miracles, but that's cool. That's not enough for me to follow you full time. But I've seen you bless my business in such a way now that I can trust that I now need to follow you full time, which is a practical point. Don't lose your real job chasing something that doesn't have excess provision yet. Yeah. Even Simon was like, Jesus, you got to show me a little more. Before I leave my job and tell my mama and tell my wife that I'm going to follow God, I need to have some proof that following you is going to provide food on the table. So here's what God tells him. God says, hey, y'all, I want, I, want I want you to do something that you've never done. I want you, I know you're a fisherman, I know this is your business, but this is what God did. He said, Peter, if you give me your business, if you give me your boat, what's valuable to you, I'll touch what you cannot do in your own skill. I'll touch your business. Give me your boat, I'll touch your business. Some of you want God to touch your business, but you've never given him your boat. You got to give me your boat first and I'll touch your business because I gave you a multiplication that school or marketing online couldn't give you. Because I can give you a favor that you ain't never seen. I can bless you in a way that you've never seen blessed before. But first, I got to know that whatever I give to you, I can get through you. Because if I can't get it through you, I don't have an invested interest in getting it to you. Right. Now this all works together, that God's going to open up the windows of heaven. God does not throw cars out of heaven. He does not throw homes out of heaven. He doesn't throw men out of heaven. If you don't go outside and show yourself, you won't be found. Right. You felt that, didn't you? God needs you and I to take advantage of his way of increase. God's way of increase is by giving you and I opportunity. And you and I got to have the faith to know if God told me to do it, that's what I follow. Because it's all contingent upon our relationship with God. That God spoke to me and he had a friend of mine, he spoke to him and said, you need to open up a pizza business in the middle of a pandemic. Now, when God speaks, you don't need other people's validation. That's what causes you to hear from God well. The greatest gift God's going to give you and I is our ability to hear. Don't go out and buy something because everybody else is doing it. You need to hear what God is saying so that when I go out there, there'll be provision for the vision. I don't care what you say. You hear me well with the ghetto voice. If God gave you a vision, he will give you the provision. He will send birds to feed you. He will send animals to take care of whatever God gives you. His will, his bill. His will, his bill. So it's critically important for you and I to understand that God's way of giving me increase is by giving me opportunity. Now I need you to be spiritual because what's going to happen is you're going to leave here and you're going to get an opportunity and you're going to think it's God. That's where discernment comes in. My greatest struggle as a leader now is being able to discern what God wants me to do and what is my own ego? Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. And you got to learn how to turn down high profile people. 
Because it's like, yeah, that sounds good, but God ain't giving me to go on it. And I know this would be a great Instagram moment for me to take a picture with you and talk about how we're doing business together, but God hasn't given me the release to do that. And most of us are so enamored with people that we ignore giving God our vote because we're so busy giving it to the person we're trying to chase. We have to trust God's ingenuity even when it's not in our industry. Like God, I'm not a singer, but if I want to sing, you know how to get me out there. God, I don't know how to do this business. I'm going to get mentors. I'm going to get teachers. But ultimately, God, I'm going to go to you in the morning and say, God, order my steps so that I don't make a bad mistake. Here's one thing that Jesus does to Peter. He affirms himself to Peter, saying that you can bank on me. Peter, go out there and put out your net. Go out in the deep. And Peter's like, Lord, we've been working all day, all night. We caught nothing. But if you tell me to do it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. The reason why most of us are not living the life of success that we envision is because we know the facts, but we don't know the truth. The facts are that you've been working all night. But the truth is, if God gave you a word, then it's go time. It don't matter how bad it is, it don't matter how ugly it is, if God gave you the green light, it's all you need. A, being professional means nothing when God gives you a prophetic word. When God says to do something, it don't matter how professional you are. It don't matter how educated you are. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If God gives you a word to do something, you need to do it now, not tomorrow. If God tells you to do something, you don't need to have a backup plan. Because a backup plan is a lack of faith. When God said, buy this building, I said, I'm going to buy it. If we go under, we go under. I ain't got no backup plan. If you said it, then it's your job to provide for it. God will confirm his word. If you're open, God will confirm. And some of you got big dreams. You got God speaking to you about what you need to let your net down in the deep end. But you're not willing to make the sacrifice for the surplus. So here we go. This is so great. His nets begin to break. His boats begin to be so full that they begin to sink. But here's the part that I want to focus on is that when he has all of these things happening, he falls at his feet and says, you know, I'm an unworthy man. Increase should make you decrease. See, the problem with many of us is increase has made us increase. We feel like because we got more, it's time to stunt. It's time to get fleek or whatever the word is. It's, it's, time to, it's time to show the world that we made it. No, increase should say, God, I'm so thankful that you blessed me. I don't even deserve this, but how could I steward this well? You need to start learning how to structure yourself for surplus. How do you structure yourself? You need to know how to have a budget, which I just showed you. Then you gotta start finding partners. Are you listening to me? Your partners don't have to be your color. Because let me give you a news flash. I'm just telling you, from my experience, most of the people that you want to help you, they're the ones stopping you from growing. Help doesn't have to come in the color that you like. 
any way you want to bless me, Lord, I, I'm open to it. I'll be satisfied. But because we limit God to the circumference of people we grew up with, we miss out on new relationships. Let me say it one more time. Because we limit our relationships to people we know, we, we inhibit our ability to grow from new relationships. I only ride with people I know. Well, you're going to be riding alone. Because whoever God is sending to you is probably assigned to you but doesn't know you. Every time God has blessed our church, it's always been by somebody I never thought would do. I didn't even know them. They just found us. Because partnerships, if whatever God is doing, even Jesus, whatever he did, he did not do it without partners. He changed the world, but he didn't do it by himself. He did it with disciples. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, what I'm going to give you is so big, you need friends to help you catch it. But the problem is, is we got so many friends that are envious of what the little that we have. I need partners. I need partners who are not going to say that's too much that you've got. Partners that know if I win, you win. I need partners that change their mentality. No, you got to have the mentality. If you don't have the right partners, you ain't going nowhere. You're not going to win. You're not going to succeed. You're not going to see all that God has for you. You need the right partners. Partners that decrease when God increases them. You cannot grow without partners. I don't care how powerful you are, you need partners. Here's the thing, oh, this is so good, good. Sexual chocolate. Let me tell you this. Woo! How you pivot determines how you prosper. Ooh. How you pivot determines how you prosper. How you pivot determines how you prosper. Some of you are going to an old well and God is saying, no, I need you to pivot because the well is dried up. You need to find another well. But you're so in love with the well that you're not realizing, I gotta learn how to pivot to prosper. <laughs> you gotta learn how to pivot to prosper. The blessing that God released was not in his net, but was in his obedience. God ain't, the net is just the, the net is the symbol of your obedience. Your obedience is what's going to prosper you. God, I'm sensing you to give me another job. Start looking. How you know God is telling you to look for another job if you don't start looking? It might be right in front of you. It may be waiting for your application and you may find out that God's calling you to a different industry. That's why you're not being fulfilled where you are. And that's why the worst place to be, hear me, is where God was. And I don't want to be in a relationship where, where God was either. As a leader, you got to be able to discern when it's time to make a shift. You got to learn how to pivot even if it don't make sense to everybody. You got to learn how to pivot even if everybody like, you crazy, what in the world are you thinking? I heard God. Noah thought, they thought Noah was crazy too. But he stepped on doing what he felt because he said, I heard God. They said, oh, you lost your mind. I may have lost my mind, but I heard God. If I'm going to prosper, I got to pivot. If I'm going to prosper, I got to pivot. And you got to know how to hear God so you can prosper. Y'all, here's the crazy thing. True obedience doesn't need details. If God, you tell me to sell my house, I'll sell it tomorrow. 
Pastor, do you know that they are bidding on houses and you can't get a house? I don't believe it. If God told me I'm going to get a house, every person that puts their offer in will get skipped because God gave it to me and God gave me the faith. I've seen them do it. I've seen them do it when the market was at the highest. A man said, how much you want to pay? I told him what I want to pay and that's what God did. But you got to make sure you heard God. Wow, here's something that I thought was so powerful. They were willing to leave everything that was prosperous off of one promise from God, come follow me. Are you so in love with your stuff that you can't let it go if God tells you to let it go? You know why you in debt? It's because you know you were supposed to give up that idol that you've been driving, but it's a God to you. It makes you feel like you got some sense of self-worth. It makes you feel like you somebody. That idol that you got, that's got you going to the store, standing in lines, trying to get the latest and greatest so that you can wear it on Instagram and show it off. That's an idol and that's why we can't grow. Y'all will stand in a long line for Gucci. And Gucci will never come to your community and put a park in there. I ain't mad at Gucci. I, I'm fine. If you Gucci, I'm Gucci. I'm just simply saying you need to invest in things that invest in you at some point. Here's something that I think is so powerful, y'all. The daily practice of fishermen. Y'all get this? They would wash their nets. Every day they would wash off the residue of the work that they have done. Ooh. Every day they washed their nets. The next thing they did after they washed their nets, after they did their work for the day, they would stretch their net because they believe the next catch is going to be bigger than this one. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. They would stretch their net because we believe that God, we thank you for this daily bread, but we believe tomorrow's daily bread is going to be bigger than what we caught today and tomorrow's going to be greater than what we caught yesterday, but we got to structure ourselves. Now, here's what they did. They started cleaning their nets before they caught anything. And some of you are waiting to catch something before you get a net. You got to have a net ready so that when God gives it to you, you're ready for it. Because when opportunity shows up, it's too late to get ready for opportunity. So you got to be ready. Your credit got to be ready. What's your credit score? I don't know. You ain't ready. How much money you got in the bank? You don't know. You ain't ready. How much savings you got? If you don't know, you ain't ready. Stop asking God for provision and start being a steward of what God has already given you because you got to structure yourself for success. How much are you willing to sacrifice to follow what God showed you? I'm willing to give it all up. Jesus healed many people, but Peter didn't follow. But when Jesus touched his business, he said, oh, you speak in my language now. Because most business people only understand profit and loss. They attach their soul security on how well their business is doing. And Jesus comes and says, I'm going I'm to give you a return that your job could never give you. That toiling all night will never give you. I want to know, can you believe me even if you failed before? If I tell you to do it again, will you do it? And if you don't believe me because you failed, then failure is your God, then I am your God. But you got to know that sometimes I will use failure to push you into success. I will use failure to teach you how to grow beyond where you ever went. My question to you is, how much do you have for God to give you more? I want to live out on the water. Why? You got to answer your why first. What's your why? Because I, I just, I just, well, no, that ain't good enough. 
Because if it ain't going to flow through you, it's not going to flow to you. Here's the reason, y'all, they would stretch their net. Because I believe that what God's going to give me is bigger than what I received before. You know why you can't believe that? Because you got a scarcity mindset. Some of you don't even have enough savings in your account. That's fine. But how are you going to come out of it? How are you going to structure yourself for surplus? You just can't pray it comes in. God's going to send you more. If he sends you a stimulus, what are you going to do with it? You need to stimulate your own economy before you stimulate another economy. You need to pay some debts off so that you can get some victories. You need to cancel out some bills that you had. Don't go take your stimulus money and go buy some shoes that all you're going to get is a bunch of lights on pages. You need to take that money and buy it and invest it into something that will bring you a return later on. We make short-term sacrifices for long-term dividends. I teach my children, my wife and I, my wife more than I teach our kids, the tenth belongs to the Lord. And I teach my children, that's the part I teach my children, you leave your clothes on the bathroom floor, you owe me $2. I want to teach you responsibility. Because responsibility don't mean nothing to you unless it costs you something. It's got to cost you something. It's got to cost you something. Son, you left your clothes on the floor, it's $2. I'm going to take your $2 and I'm going to go out and eat some ice cream on your money. Because that's what happens when people don't have discipline. You end up paying people interest and they take your money and go vacation with it because you don't have discipline. How are you going to come out of debt? You got a 30-year death sentence called a mortgage. Why'd you ain't get a 20-year? You send in one extra payment a month, you could have cut that bad boy. One extra payment a year, you could have cut that bad boy down by five, six years. Can you imagine if you had no mortgage? Can, can, think about it. Can you imagine what you would do? No, no, I want you to get so, so salivating. You watching out. Could you imagine what you could do if you had no mortgage, no rent payment? It's the first coming up and you ain't even got to worry about making a payment. You can if you structure yourself for success. work hard and I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to use debt to help me get to where I want to get to. That's too advanced, but I'm going to get out of debt. I'm not going to stay in debt. I'm not going to let debt be a slave master to me. I'm not going to let debt kill me. I'm not going to let debt enslave me. I'm not going to let the desires of getting an American dream cause me to keep buying more and buying more and buying more and buying more and realize that the dream that I wanted is now a nightmare. Because you never stop chasing the carrot. You never get off the wheel. And you who are successful, you who are making money, oh, thank God that you're making money. You're in the prime of your life and you're making money and you're doing it big and you're winning. Just make sure your winning doesn't become your God. Because some of you, you want to be a rapper, but you never could. So you adapted, you let winning. See, this is the thing you got to be careful of. When you grew up poor, winning is a drug. Come on, hear what I'm saying. When you grew up poor, winning is a drug. It never satisfies you. You get to one level and then you realize there's somebody else on a higher level. And now I got to step my game up because I got to get to the next level. Not recognizing that every new level you go to, you're always going to start on the bottom. Always. Let that sink in. Always. I don't care how great you are. Whenever you get to another level, you're always at the bottom of that room. You got to structure yourself for success. You got to go home and say, babe, we, we got to figure out how much debt we got. Pastor, I ain't got no time. Let me check. If you have an Apple phone, there's a wonderful thing called screen time. 
That lets you know how much free time you really say you have that you don't have. Android people, I know you looking really crazy right now. Y'all don't, y'all don't have none of that because Android just wants y'all just be sitting there like, like you don't know what's going on. But if 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 you have screen time and time, maybe you need to go out and get a second job. I know you just cursed at me, Pastor. Yes, you. Maybe you need to get a second job, pay the car off. Now you ain't got no car no. Now you got 10%. Now you can throw it into investing and throw it into your future. Now you can tell your job, uh, my 401k, I want you to up my percentage from 3%. I want to up it to 10% so that way I can start. And I need to monitor it. How much you got in your 401k? You don't know. You're not structuring yourself for success. You need to know. How much money you got if you die? You need to know. You got beautiful children. And you better not let your children go run after a sugar daddy because you didn't put nothing aside for them. Structure yourself for success. Baby, I'm, I want to raise my children. I want my wife and I to raise our children. I want them to be so structured well that when they grow up, they can do what you don't have to pick a field according to money. You pick your purpose. You don't pick what pays you. You pick your purpose. My daughter says all the time, I want to be a makeup artist. That's fine. I'm not going to discourage you. Who, who knows? You could be doing makeup for all these celebrities and everything. My other daughter said she want to be a babysitter. I'm like, baby, you're going to have to figure out another job. <laughs> she want to be a babysitter. All she want to do is hold babies. All she want to do is hold babies. Listen, let me tell you, she loves her baby so much. She gets it from her wife because I don't have that trait. But she loves babies so much that, that, that one day she said, um, so my, my, my brother-in-law was bringing his, his, little, his little son over at grandma's. And, and I told her, hey, um, um, Samuel's at, at, at grandpa's. And she said, Samuel's at grandpa's? She loves holding Samuel. So she went to school and she said, my stomach is hurting. Because I want to go be a babysitter for Samuel. So I go pick her up and I say, your stomach hurts, huh? Well, you can't hold Samuel. No! I want to hold Samuel. I said, if you're sick, you don't want to get the baby sick, do you? She said, okay, if I feel better in five minutes, can I hold Samuel after? But that's when you're purposed at that. When even at a young age, when your mind is set on something, you don't let roadblocks stop you. You figure out how to get around the roadblocks. You figure out how to get over all the objections and you overcome the objections so that you can grow and be great. I don't care if you're 50. Figure it out. Structure yourself for success. Figure out how to structure yourself for surplus. God, I want you to increase me, but teach me how to manage what I have. Help me to structure being good so that I can be a blessing. Close with this and I'm done, y'all. How we structure surplus determines the length of its days. How you manage surplus determines how long it lasts. Guys, I pray that you get unexpected checks. I pray that you get increase in the mail. I pray that people give you favor that you never dreamed of. But I pray you already have a structure on where it's going to go. Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to steward money well. Help us to manage money well. You are opening up the windows of heaven. Cause us to steward money well. Cause us to be disciplined. I will not order Amazon. I will not order Amazon. I will not order Am I will not. I will get my money together. I will not swipe my card. I will not. I will use cash only until I get the discipline. I will budget my money. I will make sure I tell where my money to go so I don't wonder where it went. Give me the discipline to love my destiny more than I love my fulfillment of things immediate. Help me to increase. So God, when you increase me, I will decrease. 
Lord, don't let increase get to me. Don't let increase make me increase. Let increase cause us to decrease. Let it cause us to look to the hills from which cometh our help. So Father, I pray that you would send anointing people, prophetic people to partner with us. We're tired of jealous partners. We're tired of envious partners. We're tired of backbiting partners. Send us some new friends that will help us carry the load. Send us some new friends that will give us wisdom. Send us some new friends that will give us insight. Send us some new friends that will give us direction. Send us some friends that will teach us how to structure ourselves well. <laughs>